Let's not waste time. Let us start the recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, last time I told you something. I hope it was interesting about uh, superfields in uh, dimension four. And we already see where the gauge field is. But here I need to say we can go on and on and on. But it would relate it would be related mostly to four-dimensional theory and to four-dimensional mirror. Okay. But <laughs> Uh, I will say, I will tell the ideas, okay, that would lead us to four dimensional mirror, but uh, then I'll immediately come back to lower dimensions because there are other interesting things that are on the board, namely the complex Hodge theory, okay. And also, I'd like to go today towards the Krichevier model. Because uh, people don't know what is the Krichevier model. And I consider it a kind of very interesting because it is related to ambitwister string. Now, I am not joking. I am very serious. So you will see, OK? So you are out of focus again. I'm out of, ah, I clean the board. Uh, uh huh, good. I'm in the focus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm a bit afraid of this board. So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> so still. In n equals, so there, so there is an interesting, so there are interesting theories with uh, a lot of supersymmetry. We study theory where we have four supersymmetry, four supersymmetry. Later on, for 4D mirror, we would use probably theory with eight supersymmetry. It's even more interesting. And uh, what I started to tell you about the gauge theories is about these systems. And uh, one, my, one of my friends says, you need to see the epics, OK? You need to see uh, the unsolved problem that cost a lot. Where are we going? And what are we going to achieve? So, <clears throat> so before I'll explain something about 2D theories using complex Hodge theory, and people may say that, ah, oh, it's known. You see, it's known, but this is not known. And what is not known here is the following. Uh, no, no focus again. Uh, sorry? It's again out of focus. Um, okay. <laughs> is, it, is it the focus now? Good. So, so the the issue of 4D mirror was started by mm, by uh, Nikrasov, Losev, and Shatashvili. in 1996. And we were not able to solve it. At the same time, there was another person who is looking towards 4D mirror. And it is uh, Greg Moore. And he is also looking in this direction. 
So let me try to explain what should be this four-dimensional mirror. So what Greg Moore thinks about it, you may uh, see on his homepage when he, start, when he talks about coupling the four-dimensional theory to gravity, topological theory to gravity. And uh, by the way, he has a lot of computations that could uh, help to check if the four-dimensional mirror is uh, what, what we could get. But let me try to explain. What is this four-dimensional mirror? First, what is two-dimensional mirror? So I'll omit three-dimensional mirror because some because I think it somehow goes. Uh, uh, so main step is two. So two-dimensional mirror is the following: you have some manifold X and you have a model, and here you have uh, holomorphic maps. And here we have correlation of observables. And uh, you integrate the correlation of observables. So these are evaluation observables. You integrate it over M, G, M. It's also interesting to study the case where G equals to zero. So you have these numbers. So O depend on omegas. And omega I represents the class of the cohomology of X. At the moment I omit uh, gravitational descendants. So here we have a huge bunch of numbers. So what is interesting is that this huge bunch of numbers could be nicely packed into generating function. So we just add times T1, Tn. And we sum over n. So maybe we divide by n factorial. So uh, then when I say, okay, so so this is the main object of the main object of study. And here you have the function that is called fg of t. And the issue is that you can find this, you can conjecturally find this function fg of t. That contains a lot of numbers using another model that is B model. Uh, so, so, so you, you fixed the basis in cohomology and you assigned some kind of formal yes, generating yes, parameters. Yes, exactly. 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 So, this, this function is a non linear function on cohomology. Mm -hmm. When you said that you are, when you said that you are emitting gravitational descendants, you mean you meant no capital G. Uh, so when I when I when I say that I emit gravitational descendant, I mean that I can put here so-called psi classes or tau classes. So people call them differently: tau one, k one, tau n, k k n, and you will have even more complicated functions. Ah. Mm -hmm. So where, where, where k are not zero, here we'll have uh, so-called uh, higher times. But in any way, you see, I want to explain you the main idea mm -hmm. that, uh, okay, more advanced people would say that it is function not on cohomology, but on the power series in cohomology, because we we have the, we, we have numbers here, but anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, it is a very complicated nonlinear function here, and 
this space H is equipped with the linear structure. So when Pasha said that we choose a basis, yes, we choose a basis. But it has uh, special coordinates, they call T capital, that are generating uh, parameters here that are defined clearly up to the linear transformation. Now, what people used to call them a mirror? It's called B model. You have something that I'll call Y. Okay, okay, I give my interpretation of mirror, okay? So what I'm telling you is so-called one-sided mirror, okay? So there is two-sided mirror, but, but this is one-sided. And in this way, this mirror could be understood by a mathematician when it's one-sided. And uh, it's here where we do not need to impose uh, conditions like Keller uh, being for A, B, X being a Keller manifold to tell that. Mm -hmm. So here is a B model. Here there is Y. So... <clears throat> so what is X here? Uh, what, what are the conditions on X? Almost no conditions on X. Uh, so a X would be almost complex manifold. Mm -hmm. Almost complex. Mm -hmm. And here, so what is the B model? B model is another structure. We have something that I call Y. This is the generalization of manifold. So in particular, we have, uh, we have seen that it uh, can have these uh, generalized complex structures. And maybe why it could be something, uh, something else. So maybe people would call something like motifs, you know, something. Some generalization of the notion of complex manifold, of course, or algebraic. So this structure typically, typically has moduli. You know, uh, complex manifolds have moduli. Any structures have moduli. And we want to compare them. Namely, we, namely we want to, to get these numbers. So how these two things are related? So here, here, we may say that A model also has moduli. So this model of A model is the so-called uh, Witten-Novikov differential. So it's very simple. Consider this. Let, let me call it D of T. So uh, and actually it's not the exact statement. Let me put here tilde. But uh, to some extent, you are actually deforming D with something like this. Let me put his this in, in marks. So at least the formation here is something like this. So this is not exact statement. In particular, as you know, if omega is even, so it's a basic case that we are studying. Yes, our t's were also even. And here I put some t tilde. So actually it's not the formation of this type, Actually, it's a deformation of the type Q plus integral of observable, 
associated with omega i, and I consider first written descent, integral of S1. So, so this is actual deformed tube. And I put here Ti. So the formula got cut off by the, by the camera. Maybe you can just twist it, turn the camera. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll erase misleading formula because formula with quotation marks uh, isn't that good. So I'll write it again. Okay, camera helps me not to put uh, formulas that could uh, misunderstood on the board. So here we have deformed Q. So this deformed Q is Q original plus T I integral of o omega. So I put here omega I and also I put here one integrated over the circle. So this Q would actually, and this thing of course acts on observable that depend on some other omega. So this Q acts here as a differential and here is a deformation. So in the case of A model, we have a deformed theory and we have special coordinates on the space of deformation. The Q square equals zero? Yes. And here we have just the formation. So uh, one would expect the following. First, that dimension of the modular space of Y should equal to what? Should equal to dimension of cohomology of X. But it's not enough. So what, what we would like to have here, we would like to put on the moduli space, special coordinates. Why? Because uh, we want to have these special coordinates in order to be able to extract Similar function, sorry, I, uh, sorry, it was a function, f of t. I would like to extract function f of t out of this data. So what, what do I typically have here? I typically have here some simple structure, like simple structure. I'll call it simple, clear structure, like in the case of Calabiao manifolds, three Beltrami differential contracted into omega omega integral over y. So that's a simple structure. However, this structure does not give us a function. To get a function, we need special coordinates. We need special coordinates on the modular space. And then you may take such simple structure and say, look, this is a third derivative of this T. And in this way, we reconstruct T. So main message is that the theory Y, so it's not enough to find uh, the dual object. So when you have dual object, you can study its moduli. It's important to have
special coordinates here. Okay, so t is the coefficient of mu, of mu or coefficient of Beltrami? Okay, so, uh, so mu, so mu, mu corresponds to vector field. Vector field on moduli of y. Actually, if you have a tangent vector, you can have this formula because vector, tangent vector, actually, mu, mu is a tool. If you have a vector, tangent vector, on my, you may construct mu out of it. So this formula is a map. It takes three tangent vectors. But we would like to have a very special coordinate on the modular space. Such that we will have, have not just some vectors here, you know. Having some vectors here, we will never be able to write down this equation. We need to have very special coordinates. And then we will have very special tangent vectors, d over dti. Special tangent vectors at all points of the modular space. And then we would like to plug this into formula like this and say that it is the third derivative. So main message in this description is that uh, in order to have great result, and this great result, I will say function f of t, you need to have here special coordinates. So one of the way to find the special coordinates is to say that this function f satisfies some uh, nice equations like WDV. Then, in some cases, not in all cases, due to some other arguments, quite simple, you may reconstruct the function. But uh, it, it is, but this doesn't seem to be conceptual understanding. Conceptual understanding means that you need to have conceptual understanding of the special coordinates on the modular space. Okay? If you know somehow these special coordinates, you can play this game. If you don't know special coordinates, what could you do? You have this structure. You see, to write down this structure, you do not need to be, as people in the United States say, a rocket scientist. <laughs> this formula was written by Strominger in the year 1985 or 86. For Calabria manifold. It's very easy, you see. It's just zero mode counting. It's not a great formula. So, so there. So, what I'll explain to you is kind of a tool to get these special coordinates. So, they are, they are so important that uh, some people used to call these special coordinates mirror map. You see, you may ask, how, how on earth you can call coordinates mirror map? And, but it reflects the understanding of the people that the dual object is clear. So the thing that you need to do is to provide it with special coordinates, OK? I will explain this, but we we need to see perspective, you see. I explained to you what is two-dimensional mirror in some general terms. If you understand this, 
you need to find a space that has uh, the similar such as this dimension word, dimension of MY equals to the dimension of cohomology. And then you say, ah, now I need to find this special coordinates. So you will play some game. Now, let me tell you what is the four, what the four dimensional mirror should be. You see? The reason to study two-dimensional mirror is only to get the four-dimensional mirror. Two-dimensional mirror, moreover, is done. You see, people are just completing the picture. Four-dimensional mirror is needed to understand the full uh, structure of the business. I'll come back to the issue of two-dimensional mirror later on. But first, I need to show you where are, are we going. So in 4D, in 4D, we would like first to understand what is the A module. And there is an official candidate for A module that everybody recognizes as an A module. And this is so-called Donaldson Witten theory. So, okay, let, let me say official. See, this model is current president. So when you ask what is the four-dimensional A model, this model is a president, and this president sits here for 30 years, okay? For 35 years, we have this president. So here we have the following thing. So holomorphic maps are replaced by, by what? by self-dual connections. Evaluation observables are replaced by so-called Donaldson observables. So let me recall, so I should not re recall what is self-dual connection, everybody know it. However, I need to recall what is the Donaldson observable. <laughs> Donaldson, uh, in, in uh, two minutes. So here we have the modular space of instantons. And here we have X4. And the main thing is, that there is a universal bundle. And this universal bundle has universal connection A, or I'll even call it Nabla A. So this is universal connection. And if you have universal connection, you have universal curvature. So you see, universal just means that you have uh, both uh, modulate space of solutions and point of observations. During our course, we had it several times. We have universal curvature, F. That is, of course, universal connection square. <laughs> we have interesting things called characteristic classes. that are basically traces of f to the power n. But uh, this is uh, for, uh, hmm? for un. So uh, oh. you, you, may, you may think about different uh, 
classes. So she, so what, what do I have here are just invariants. So, so what, what is the variance of the joint representation? So what is the fiber of E over a pair? Ah. Okay, it's, so it's a vector bundle. You may consider it as a vector bundle. Or you, you may consider it as a G bundle. But what, G, what? some group, any group. You may even take E8 if you wish. So let me put here, uh, okay, simple group. Okay, I can say reductive group. So people mostly use traces of Fn. Actually, it's better to say invariance of the adjoint. You say curvature is a section of the adjoint bundle, right? <laughs> so to have scalars, uh, we need invariance. So if you'd like to study, say, E7, I don't know why, but. No, sorry, Andre, again, what is E? E is a bundle. No, you said that you said that it's a universal bundle, so it's a very particular bundle. So what is it? Ah. Ah, oh, I see. Sorry, so something happened. Something happened, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Ah, yes. So this universal bundle uh, is uniquely described by its properties. Like uh, in the case of standard A model, we had universal holomorphic map. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what we know. But this appeared first. So <clears throat> for a given point here, for a given point here, mm -hmm. for a given point here. I, I should have uh, a bundle E over X4. So bundle E over X4 has topology. Yes. The topology is given by the characteristic classes. Yes. Yes. So, so uh, if I'm not uh, studying a specific gauge group, so different bundles have different topology. Okay. okay, okay, I see. Like, say, if you have U1 bundle, it has the first chain class. I see. If you have a more complicated bundle, it has other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Other characteristic class. So it, it's something that determines the topology. No, you're saying that a point in M inst, kind of the definition of a point in, in M inst contains the, contains the notion of a bundle in it. So, yes, so, so when I say the bundle here, I can evaluate it at a point, E yeah. over X4 times yes. point. Sure. Yes. So this has, uh, this has a topology. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, another requirement is that if I take this connection, and I go along X4, I should have uh, a self-dual connection. Mm -hmm. So I, maybe I need to say it. Delta A restricted to the point in mod in M inst should be self-dual. Just like when we studied holomorphic maps, for a given moduli, in the, in the space of holomorphic maps, we need to have holomorphic map with a given topology and with a holomorphicity, right? Mm -hmm. And then it is continued, and then that's continued on this space. So you may ask, what do I mean universal band? Because I need to take the maximal moduli space. So it means that I need to take all instantons. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not instantons of the fixed size. 
-hmm. Instanton of all sizes if there is a notion of a size. Mm -hmm. All instantons in that uh, satisfy this data. Mm -hmm. Exactly like we had a notion of all holomorphic maps. So, yes, this is this universal bundle with a group G. Here are these invariants. Here, here there are invariants of a joint. You see, when I say reductive, maybe the, the, this could be somehow extended. I don't know at the moment. So, ah, since it's an old, it's, it's, since it's official president, for official president, you have reductive. I'm explaining the official president. So, here I have invariants of the adjoint. And therefore, I have uh, differential forms here. Because I take invariant of the adjoint, I will call it O of F, and I label it by I. Not by traces of powers, by I. There are many invariants. In the simplest case, there are many invariants. So these all I's of F form definitely differential forms here. Now, there was an old prescription. You see, old president means old prescription. So old prescription means that you integrate over cycles here, these differential forms, you get, uh, so, so since, uh, so here, so this, so this, from this space, I have projections, 2x4 and 2m inst. Let me say, let me tell you what is an old prescription. Old, but still old means official. I think it has to be modified, but knowing that it has to be modified, I have the obligation to tell you the, what people are calling standard prescription, okay? So please distinguish what, what is the current state of art, and what, uh, what are the potential modifications that I would like to propose? So, according to old prescription, you need to take the following thing. Old means Donaldson. And also copied by Witten. So, in the old prescription, you need to do the following. You need to take products, product of OI of F, O, integrated over what? Over C1, etc., CK, sitting in X4. And then integrate the result over M instanton. So this is the old Donaldson definition of uh, Donaldson invariance. So it means that first you take direct image along cycles here and then integrate over M instanton. So this is an official prescription. So Sorry, again, what, what I see is? Cycles. So cycle not belongs, uh, cycle lies. 
Ah, okay. Si A es más alto. Y next four. So what is the way to understand it? The way to understand it is, of course, the following, that you have not only one copy of X4. You have many copies of X4. So when you have this moduli space of instanton, you have this connection everywhere here. And uh, so well, let me see, do we have connection on X? So I don't know yet. Do, do we have it? Okay, I will not, you see, I, I will not go into fantasies. I will give a definition that Donaldson gave, okay? Official definition. X four times M instant of. When you integrate, so you, you, you have this form, you, if, if, when you integrate, you get a differential form on the moduli space of instantons. You multiply all these forms, you integrate over the moduli space of instantons. Mm -hmm. So it actually means that you do the following. You take pi, uh, so X4, here I have projection to X4. Here, here is pi M, projection to instantons. So you have pi M star along the cycle CI of O I I of F. So this is differential form of the universal instanton. Here is projection along CI. Right? I wrote M to instanton. And this is differential form of the model space of instantons. So officially you need to multiply them and integrate. So this is an official definition. And then you compute these numbers and you are happy. Uh, why is it by upper star? You're not, are you doing any pullbacks here? Oh, um, it is a mistake, it is a mistake. Mm -hmm. You see, it's because M is already here. Mm -hmm. I have no, no place to put a star. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see, not enough space. Of mm -hmm. course, and of course, direct image along the cycle. Yeah. So it means that we take differential form, we integrate along the cycle. Mm -hmm. This is official definition. You have a bunch of numbers. And uh, Professor Gregory Moore spends like 25 years doing many different things. And among them, finding tricks to compute, this th to compute these things. Some tools to compute these things. So conjecturally, if you multiply it by the generating times, you have a function. And some of our old topologies, maybe you, maybe you need to keep the uh, X4 like we are keeping uh, CP1. So if you sum, all this, basically you have a function f of t on a huge space.
And the problem of the four-dimensional mirror is to find another way to get this function. Not by computing all this. Using uh, technique like this, technique like that, you know. Here I need to make several remarks. So I somehow explain. So original problem is we have the we have this function, and then how to get another description of it in some version of B model. So people. Uh, Andy, the sound has disappeared. Your sound has disappeared. Your sound is, is off. No sound. What about my, my sound right now? No, now we do have sound. Uh -huh. There were several okay. seconds without. I'm sorry. So the question is, what is a B model? So let, 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 let me put here a set of questions. Hmm? So <clears throat> questions. What is a B model? Question number one. But basically, it's the main question. So there is a main question. So if uh, you completely solve this question, you will get a field surprise for sure. I'm not, I do not guarantee you able price, but field price for sure. If you are young, if you are not young, uh, you'll get something. Bet so it's between field price and uh, and uh, able price. But would would you be young? It's a field price for sure. What is a B model? And uh, there are. Related questions. What is the main question? And there is also official candidate. Okay. And the official candidate is something unusual, something that you would not expect. Why is official algebraic integrable system? You may say, what a surprise. You may ask, why not a manifold? And your question would be OK, because this is, let me tell you, this looks like a mirror system of the second kind. And you may ask me, come on. I have never told you about two kinds of the mirror systems. And I would say, hold on, I'll come to this. But uh, 
when you have an official candidate, uh, you are not asking him about his relatives or competitors. It's official candidate. So what I'm telling you is official story. It's, it's, it's how people see it at the moment. So what is this algebraic integrable system? And how it is, how it would be related to donaldson witness theory? So first of all, what is the algebraic integrable system? Suppose we have symplectic, uh, so-called complex symplectic manifold. So I need to say not complex symplectic. So people use different uh, notations. I forgot how they holomorphic symplectic. So it's not so the same. It it's not the same as scalar. No. Uh -huh. It's not the same as scalar. So holomorphic symplectic manifold is a manifold that is first complex. And second, it has a two form, non-vanishing, of the type two zero. So this is a, and 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 this and this two form is of course closed from the point of view of that board. So here I mimic what I know about ordinary sym symplectic manifolds, trying to forget uh, Z bar. So heuristically, I'm forgetting the Z bar and this, and these are precise definition. People actually got these uh, manifolds just by complex, just by continuation of uh, ordinary symplectic manifolds just by analytical continuation. So I hate the process of analytical continuation because I don't see its, uh, its essence. For me, it's something ill-defined. But uh, no, it's well-defined if things are algebraic. If things are not algebraic, I don't know what would it mean to analytically continue. Okay, but still. So Catherine. Okay. I'll keep my emotions. Two form and third. It is integrable in the sense that uh, it has a vibration on the Lagrangian toroid. And everything here is holomorphic. Holomorphic vibration on Lagrangian toroid. Here is the base. Integrable in the sense of this. So the best known example of such system is K3. I write K3 here. Here I have elliptic curve. It's a fiber. And here I have a great base. Okay, uh, you see it, it could have uh, the generation. It's not, so it's, uh, it's vibration, not a bundle. So this store I could degenerate. But it is like the okay. usual integrable system, like uh, Lagrangian Torre, something bad can happen to them. Yes, yes. So that's why people call it algebraic integrable system, because mm -hmm. everything comes out of it. Mm -hmm. So here, here you have uh, elliptic curve, here you have K3. And here we have a great base 
this base is CP1. And maybe you know what happens. So, so K3 in some sense is a universal curve, universal elliptic curve. Because uh, you have 24 points of the generation. So actually this CP1 is a covering of the ordinary moduli space because ordinary moduli space has singularities, I mean the base. We know it. And here we don't have this orbital singularity. So basically, it's, it's the most obvious object that you can get. Just get rid of the orbital singularity. No Z3, no Z2 stabilizator. So we know there's the Euler number of what? Euler number of M1, 1. So everybody knows it. It's 1 over 12, yes? So it's clear, not a manifold. And now we want to have something like a manifold. So it, it should have a integer or oil, number. So it means that of course, since it's, it has oil or number like this because it's an orbifold, we need to cover it somehow, yes? So let us cover it 24 times to have two. That's why we get CP1, okay? So That's how I relate. I didn't understand this logic. You, you know what is the moduli space of Riemann surface of genus one with one mark point? Yes, but what's the relation to this picture? Ah, this is this figure, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is an orbifold. Mm, yes, well, it has, one, it has one, one non orbifold point at infinity. Yes. So, uh, nevertheless, mm -hmm. you may ask what, you may, you may ask what would happen if we would like to have a nice base. Base being not an orbifold. Mm -hmm. We need to glue here extra copies until we get something uh, without angles. Yes. So you may guess how many, how many copies should we add? Mm -hmm. And you may easily guess that, the, that if it's a manifold, if, would, the, would base be a manifold? It should get, uh, integer Euler number. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to imagine the Euler number of the complex manifold to be equal to one. So it contradicts Hodge. So the, uh, the smallest thing is two that you can have. Mm -hmm. But what's the, what's the relation of gluing copies of M11 to the, to the CP1 arising at the, as the base of that vibration? See, you see, you, you have this vibration. Then you try to glue things mm. on the base. You're putting several bases together until you have uh, the base uh, that is not universal, but that's not an orbifold. So it's kind of a minimal non-orbifold base. So, so you I... do not allow base to be an orbifold. So you're saying that this CP1 in this picture in the lower right corner secretly cuts into many, into 24 pictures like above. Yes, because it's a universal, it's universal curve. Mm -hmm. ah. And that's why you see, I'm trying to explain you that this one over 12 here is related to this 24 singular points here. Hmm. So the one can get a K3 from a model space of one point towards. Yeah. So you, you can get it if you glue 
uh, things together. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's how you get it. So when people uh, studied uh, elliptic curves, they knew that they are coming in families, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course they had a projection to coefficients. Mm -hmm. And this is the way how they somehow got this K3. Mm -hmm. So it's another way to see K3 like this. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. So 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 it's just pure so this is just pure geometry. Very nice. By the way, there are moduli of this K3. And uh, there are not 24 of them. The number is like 18 or 19, I, I always forget. And uh, it means that you cannot move these points independently. Mm -hmm. OK, so this, is, so this is kind of geometry. This is a uh, famous algebraic system. Mm -hmm. So this is an algebraic system with a compact base. Mm -hmm. There are many other algebraic systems. And people may uh, play the game, how to construct this algebraic system or that algebraic system. And of course, you know that it is uh, symplectic because uh, K3, you know, complex structures on K3, it's hypercalor, etc. I'm, I'm just giving you an example. So, what is the algebraic integrable system? Just imagine this K three, uh, or, or you can uh, have something similar with a more complicated uh, fiber. Okay. So we have this guy. And then and then you have the following question. And the question would be so, so it's a, it's a standard uh, proposal. So so we have this guy or some other guys with non-compact base. How to deform, deform this algebraic system. And we know how to deform algebraic system. So uh, we can do it using Hamiltonians. Then you might try to look uh, what are Hamiltonians. And uh, after some reasoning, you may uh, see that Hamiltonians ah. Okay, so, 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 so there are some Hamiltonians. And um, And then you are deforming this integrable system. And then the question is, there is a simple system, a simple question. How to associate to a break integrable system some simple number? Simple means what is the analog of mu, mu, mu? Omega, omega. So you may ask, what is the sphere here? Okay. So answer is that there is not there is not such a thing as a single sphere. Rather, there are manifolds.
word b2 plus equal to 1. So what is b2 plus? So b is for bad team, okay? I never heard about Betty, so it's my fault. So would it be Hodge? It would be great, but it's for Betty. So well, what is two plus? Two plus means the following. B2 is the, the second Betty number. You have the notion of uh, duality on cohomology. Oh. Second cohomology, of course. Not all cohomology, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Second cohomology. So plus is self-dual. So first of all, what are these strange manifolds? It is CP1, CP2. You see, for CP2, you have B2 uh, equals to 1. And it is entirely plus. You have CP1 times CP1. Here, the second cohomology are two-dimensional. And they decompose into plus and minus. And there are many others. I have kind of my favorite example. You see, favorite because I used it in, uh, in computation. That, that when I write this CP2, CP1 times CP1, you say, oh, I know it. It's complex geometry. I know that having. A manifold, they can easily get a lot of other manifolds. So I can take a point here in X. So let us call these manifolds, I don't know. I need to call them somehow. Ah, okay. I don't know how to call them. I know. Well, so then it's the class. How to call them? It's too long. OK, I, I, I have a right to, uh, to give them a name temporarily. I'll call this manifold xy. And why? It's because when I was in Yale and was working on this with uh, Nikrasov and Shatashvili, Moore and Witten were also working on this. So this Y is for Yale, OK? So if you have x, y, you, and you have a point, you can have the new one by blow up at a point in x, y. And this would also be self-dual. Um, if I get it correct. OK, so there are many of them. And uh, it turns out that if you have this manifold x, y, you can write. I'm telling you the general picture. You can write a similar formula. So it takes like uh, several pages of computation, but it is doable. Hey, you what, may write something. What, what was the role of sphere before? I didn't understand. Of what? CP2? No, no, no. Be before you, you said that you want to mimic ah, the role of sphere. It's because, uh, it, it, it's because uh, uh, there is a sphere with three marked points. OK. It's, it's a specific. Yes. Here, by counting zero modes, 
you will compute this answer for Kalabiyao manifold. Mm -hmm. If you have landau ginsburg model, you can also have similar formula that I will describe later. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. I would say that it's, it's analogous to this. Okay. Actually, it's because you see three marked points here because uh, you need to, 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 to keep some point not moving. So but, uh, but let me omit this technicality. So you this is because of the sphere, the modular space has uh, only MZ, only M zero three has three marked points on dimension uh, zero. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so, so something similar uh, happens here, but. <clears throat> <clears throat> but what you need, but what you need to need, but what you need to get everything, you need to start the deformation of algebraic integrable systems, and uh, you need the uh, special coordinates. Now, Now, what is, what is basically known? It is basically known what is the algebraic integrable system associated to different groups. So people uh, did some research using different techniques, and they created a lot of such algebraic integrable systems. And they convince themselves that uh, they are dual, that they are proper, because they managed to compute analog of this, simplest correlators. What, what people don't know yet is the theory of special coordinates on the deformation space of algebraic systems. So would they know it, they would take result like this. That is in my paper with, uh, so Nikrasov. And there is also another paper of Wheaton, of Edward Wheaton and Gregory Moore. It's like 96, I think. It's called integrating over the Coulomb branch. Okay. So would we know these coordinates? We could take this simple result, plug in coordinates, and compute all the series, and do it for uh, all groups. And you'll get a lot of interesting numbers. And the generating function for all these interesting numbers would satisfy interesting equations. That would be the analog of WDVV. And most probably so-called Nikrasov partition function would play a key role there. So it is kind of official project with official questions. So, so the problems that I had 
in years. What's the ability to understand this structure? You see, here I'm explaining not the answers. Say nothing about constructions. Here I'm trying to, to explain the question. That the mirror is like this and you deform it like that. So the well-known example, so the simplest example is the group SU2. So if the group is SU2, you basically consider the piece of this base when you take two points together. And you may ask which points? Actually, uh, there is no uh, conventional numbering of these points. If you move these points around each other, uh, the labeling are, change, are changing, as, as it's, <laughs> it's clear, yes? So there, there was a person, I think it is Marita, but I may be mistaken, who classified singularities that happen when you take several points together. And he and the Marita classified them according to some table. So, uh, so here, so to get SU2, you need to take two points together and consider the disk here and forget about the rest. So it is, so it'll be kind of singularity theory. So, so this is the problem, a problem to, 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 to be solved. So what is needed is a mirror map or theory of special coordinates on the deformation space of algebraic integrable systems. Because once again, algebraic integrable system could be deformed by Hamiltonians. So if you have one system, you can go to another system. That's not quite clear. So the usual integrable systems cannot be deformed. Right? Oh. Let me, you see, it's a good point. So, so I have to explain this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at some moment, I'll explain this, that algebraic integrable systems, algebraic, ah. I mean, you can reparameterize your, 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 your set of Hamiltonians, but the Tore will not be deformed. So essentially you're not doing anything. Okay. So, uh, so let us make a break here, mm -hmm. okay? And, uh, and uh, after the break, I hope to answer your question. Mm -hmm. The break would be very short, okay? The break would take just seven minutes. And I remember your deadline, good? Thank you, thank you.
Ok. Pasha. Uh, yes. Ok, so I have several arguments that would convince you that they can be deformed. Mm -hmm. So first of all, when I explained you about K3, I told you that mm -hmm. when you put together M11, you will get a K3, but you have never asked me with which complex structure. So it will be a topological K3. Mm -hmm. And of course, it will be a very special point in the space of K3s. Mm -hmm. But space of K3 is uh, dimensional. Mm -hmm. so they have uh, moduli. Mm -hmm. And of K of K3 could be seen in the equations of K3. So let us have a look on what K3 is. So you are saying this is really about kind of algebraic integrable systems versus normal ones. So normal ones are rigid yes. and these ones yes. are not. And, and this is basically because algebraic integrable system have, uh, have the data that normal integrable systems do not have, mm -hmm. I think. So algebraic integrable system <clears throat> have, so, so the fibers, fiber of algebraic integrable systems mm -hmm. is what? It's a so-called abelian variety, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it has moduli. So it, so it has moduli. And then the data is encoded in how moduli depend on the base. So in the case of ordinary integrable system, mm -hmm. I think you, don't, you, you, you have a circle, right? Or a torus. So, uh, so what can you associate to it? Is it possible to associate to it something like a length? I don't understand. Uh, I... What kind of modulus do you want? No, no, I, I didn't understand. So in the algebraic world, mm -hmm. you have algebraic torus, to, mm. algebraic tori. Ah, the fiber, the fiber is a usual torus in, in the, in the yes. yeah, product of usual circles, yeah. Yes. So, uh, but it is also a complex manifold, mm -hmm. and being a complex manifold, and having topology uh, of the ordinary torus. Mm -hmm. It is a so-called abelian variety. Mm -hmm. And abelian variety do have moduli. So this, uh, this looks like uh, uh, this SYZ construction. So you have base and then have the Lagrangian fiber. So this fiber, you can have mirror symmetry to the dual torus. Yes. So, uh, so, so in, 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 every time when you have a torus, you can have uh, a dual torus. Yes. So that is mirror. They are mirror. So fiber eyes, they are, the torus is dual, is a mirror to the dual torus. So you have same base. But uh, you can have the mirror to the dual. You have another dual manual. What is the question? Uh, so, uh... so, 
So in some sense, uh, yes, but uh, but what can you? Okay, so so if you, if you have a torus, you have a dual torus. Right. Yes. Yes. But I have the same base. I have the same base. You. Yeah. <clears throat> so you for each torus. You change it to the dual torus. So, uh, but, but, but what is this? Uh, you see, when I'm talking about the mirror here, yes. so I'm just talking about integrable systems at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just want to say that in integrable system, there is a dependence of this, of how this abelian variety depends on the point of the on the base so uh, so let, let, let me say that there are typically different cases so so tau could be constant or tau could depend somehow on the base the, the depend on the base somehow and uh, and there is a kind of Invariant, so you you may invariantly say that uh, so if you have a, if you have a system, you can some you can somehow characterize how tau depends on the base. Pasha. Yes. So you see, I I could write you these formulas, but I want to, but I want you to. But I actually want to provide more conceptual explanation that uh, that uh, the difference between ordinary integrable system, as far as I understand, and this is that uh, is that fiber has uh, a complex parameter called moduli because mm -hmm. it's algebraic torus and uh, topologically. Smooth torus doesn't have moduli, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> and that's why in real case you can you only have topology, and in complex case, okay, mm -hmm. you actually have some function. I see, I see. Uh, maybe it's not the best explanation. I can give you a bit more technical explanation. Maybe as a zero approximation, it's it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 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 I wanted to give the overall picture. Mm -hmm. I intentionally wanted to make this like this. Mm -hmm. So so please believe that they have moduli mm -hmm. and consider mm -hmm. this as an example. And uh, Okay, mm -hmm. and this is, by the way, what a so-called Zyberg-Witten theory is all about. So, so let me, instead of saying Zyberg-Witten theory, let me tell you that this data, this data of the algebraic integrable system is actually the data that determines how supermultiplets a billion in D equals four coupled to each other. Uh, so, so, you, what, what? So, uh, so at the moment I was talking like a pure mathematician that has no idea about any kind of physics, mm -hmm. right? But after that, you see, I, I can try to give you, so if, if you start to think about examples of uh, algebraic systems, so typically they are coming from periods. Mm -hmm. Because you have, so, so what, what do you actually have? You have a phase, okay. Let us come to, first let me, let me speak in the 19th century language. In the 19th century language, right? like oscillator. 
like pendulum or whatever. You see, you, you have something. You have a phase space. Just imagine that it's integrable and one dimensional systems, all one dimensional systems are integrable. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, So having this integrable system, what, so what, what do you have in the real case? In the real case, you have angle, uh, angle action coordinates, yes? Mm -hmm. In the terminology of the... Uh, of so having an action, you have... Uh, you have an uh, you have an angle, but note that everything depends on the system. Mm -hmm. the, the, this decomposition depends on the system. So, so, so what you actually what you are actually computing, you actually you are actually computing periods. Uh, and there are parameters there. Uh, okay, but okay, this, this, this was some 19th century talk. Well, let me tell you how it appeared in the end of the second of the 20th century. In 20th century. People study d equals four, n equals one super. I explained you n equals one, but they studied d equals four, n equals two supersymmetry. So this supersymmetry contained one chiral multiplet plus vector multiple. So. In chiral multiplet, you know what you have. You, you have. And also a fermion. So I, I was not discuss, the, the, discussing it, but so I tell you, so please believe me, that on vector multiplet, there is a gauge field. And fermion. You see, we, we did not study this uh, vector multiplets. Maybe we, we, we should study them some, some, somewhere. But you need to know why, you see? Before you study something, you need to know why you are studying it, right? <laughs> and it's, so we go in circles. So I tell you something. Here you believe me, here you not. But you got interested. And then I'll tell you that this may be explained if I tell you something else. And then you know why you need to hear this something else. Okay? So, so it's the only way how you can grow, grow up your knowledge. You cannot grow up your knowledge without being interested. So now I'll tell you how these algebraic integrable systems appear in supersymmetry. Mm -hmm. Maybe then you'll be more interested in algebraic integrable systems and also more, more interested in supersymmetry. And, and these algebraic integrable systems are interested because uh, they are related to the four-dimensional mirror. Otherwise, who, who would be interested in that? You see? The, 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 that's how I'm trying to attract you to the subject. So, so this so, n, equal, n equal two, Susie, means that uh, those multiplets, they are some sort of souped up version of the ones that we discussed yesterday. So d equals four, n equals two, we somehow studied when we discussed Donaldson theory. Wow. We studied non-abelian. Now we, now we would like to study abelian. Yeah, but the, the other day you explained to us what, uh, what is this? What are the superfield formalism 
for d equal four and n equal one. Here, here you want n equal two. So, so yes. this, these are some more complicated. Wait, 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 there, there is no. You see, it's more complicated, and there is no, I would say, uh, satisfactory superfield formalism here. Ah. But still, I see. Uh, okay. There is such a system mm -hmm. that has extended supersymmetry, and uh, it contains chiral multiplets. Uh, that, that now, as I said, now in the joint and gauge fields. So one place where we can, you very committed, it's in the Donaldson Witten theory. Again, when you write down the delta function on the space of instantons, mm -hmm. it was also known to be n equals two. Uh, supersymmetric, supersymmetric theory, however, non abelian. Mm -hmm. And the role of this uh, fam of this uh, was uh, kind of uh, special. So one was equivalent parameter, and another was uh, was a ghost when you gauge fix for muonic symmetry. Mm. So of course you met these two complex scalars already in n equals uh, two d equals four super uh, young mills. Sorry, who, who are they again? Who is phi? Okay. Okay, you see, th things are related. So just imagine that you would like to write down delta function on instantons. Yeah. You just write f plus equal to zero. Mm -hmm. But you're not just writing f plus equal to zero. You would like also to, to take a coset with respect to the gauge symmetry. OK? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. So, uh, and of course, this should be a delta function, Matai equivalent. So now, Imagine that you that you are working this uh, delta function properly. So what so what would you get? First of all, since since delta function, I'll be very short, trying to say it in several words. Since f plus equal to since it's a delta function, it should be first of all delta function delta form of the space of fields. Yes. That's why you have fermions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Them. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have Durham theory on the space of connections. Then you have a gauge symmetry. So gauge symmetry is, of course, a super gauge. Mm -hmm. Because whenever you have uh, uh, a symmetry on any manifold, and you study forms here, you have also IV, LV and IV. So actually, pair of LV and IV is universal Cartan uh, supergroup acting on differential uh, superalgebra acting on differential forms on, on the manifold. So when you say uh, you'd like to take motions with respect to gauge, you need to gauge fix this symmetry, right? Mm -hmm. sure. on, on general grounds. Then I say in one word. When you are taking gauge fixing, you of this symmetry, you have ghosts. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there are ghosts corresponding to bosonic piece of the symmetry. We don't talk about that. But there are also ghosts corresponding to the, this odd symmetry. And it's not surprised, so you are not surprised that these ghosts are, first of all, even. And that, and second, that they are in a joint, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have two scalars. So when you are writing delta function, you, inev you inevitably come to two adjoint scalars. Mm -hmm. And these are exactly the adjoint scalars that Edward Witten got by twisting d equals 4 and equals 2 supersymmetry. So appearance of two, two scalars here, and the fact that this theory 
comes out of d equals four n equals two somehow indirectly imply that this theory has two scalars because twisting changed only the spins of the fermions doing nothing with both of them. Mm -hmm. So that's how you may say that you know that d equals four n equals two supersymmetry has two scalars. You may also see these two scalars if you understand that if you have d equals four n equals two, you need to have more multiplets. It's not enough to have chiral multiplets or vector multiplets. You need to have both of them. And chiral has two scalars. So in any way, now you understand that gauge theory in D equals four, N equals two has two scalars, okay? Mm -hmm. Or one complex scalar because we wrote it five bar five. Okay, so, so since it has two scalars, since it, since it has a scalar, we need to study the question. How, so now we go to D equals four, N equals two abelian. So it's, it's, not, it's not twisted supersymmetry, it's just, it's, so you mentioned twist here, but this one is not twisted. It doesn't matter for so so twist do not touch scalars, so okay. twist uh, touches only fermions. Okay, so now we study d equals four n equals two abelian theory, mm -hmm. and this abelian theory, of course, has, so it has scalars. And uh, last time we were discussing the metric. Remember the scalar metric. Now the interesting. Uh, Question would be, how do scalars couple to each other and to gauge field in D equals four and equals two abelian theory? Suppose you have you uh, one to the of the rank K. Mm -hmm. So how do how do scalars couple? And you see the answer is that they are coupling in a very special way. Actually, their coupling is determined by algebraic integrable system. So Pasha, I, I wait that you'll say, wow, why coupling of scalars, this metric on scalars, would depend by some crazy guy like algebraic integrable system? Hmm? Uh, coupling constant uh, can be complexified. So you have coupling constant plus the set angle. Yes, yes, exactly. So as Sen says, <laughs> it's as Sen says, We should first start. We should first study term that is f mu two squared. And now it 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 it, will, it should couple to to scalar somehow. So I'm writing something very general. I f mu j. I'm writing something approximate, but just to just to give you the feeling, I'll call it H I J. Asha. Yes. So we may expect something like this, and also we may expect that uh, this the same H. Would come here. So there is so there should be some function h. 
And this function should be governed not by n equals one, by n equals two supersymmetry. And people started to study this function. And uh, while they were studying this function, they found somehow that they could, could not write a consistent theory. It turns out that consistent theory would mean that this function hij, so it could be constant, it's okay, but if it's not constant, it had to satisfy additional requirements. And the only way to fix these additional requirements would be that this function hij would be determined by algebraic integrable system. But in algebraic integrable system, uh, there are two varieties, a billion variety. How do, how do they come from? Idea is simple. You see here we have the gauge fields, a billion gauge fields. And these a billion gauge fields have electromagnetic duality. So electromagnetic duality of, of a billion fields turned out to be the only way to make this coupling constant being non-constant. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's not a constant. So, so it turned out that if you would like to put here something that is not a constant, mm -hmm. the full thing would be consistent only if you use electromagnetic duality in the way. And when you have this electromagnetic duality here, you have uh, transformations like tau, one over tau, etc. And you found, and you find, surprisingly, that these are modular, transform modular transformations. And that's why these algebraic integrable systems appeared in supersymmetric series. Um, I'm completely lost. So, no, I'm just completely lost. So, wh wh where, do, where do the constraints come from? What, what, is, what, what does the electromagnetic duality do? Oh, oh, so, constraint comes from the following source. Mm -hmm. You write down such a system mm -hmm. and you impose n equals 2 supersymmetry. Mm -hmm. So, not only gauge fields and fermions are mixing through each other, and not only these five fields are mixing with fermions. But it should be possible to mix bosons with bosons if you if you apply supersymmetry twice. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you may ask, does it impose any constraint on this H? And the answer turns out to be yes. But when you say it applied twice, you don't mean R symmetry. No, I mean you, you apply one supersymmetry that takes scalar to fermion. Mm -hmm. then, then you apply another supersymmetry mm -hmm. that takes this fermion to gauge field. Mm -hmm. So it means that coupling constant here and coupling constant here should know each other. Mm -hmm. And I am telling you the result, and it's my fault that I cannot state this result in uh, one sentence. No, I can state it, but I cannot explain it in one sentence. The classical result of uh, late 70s, mm -hmm. early 90s, early 80s of the last century was if you want this system to have n equals 2, d equals 4 supersymmetry, you need to put here almost so something like the period matrix from the algebraic integrable system. So people realize that these systems Supersymmetric are governed by algebraic integrable systems. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, when it appeared in the late 70s, beginning of 80s, it was just mathematical curiosity, you know? As it happened many times in supersymmetric theories. So you start, you start doing supersymmetric theories, you get something like Keller condition, okay? That's what we discussed last time. How did we get Keller condition from supersymmetry? Sorry, but I'm, I'm confused. You said at, at one point that one condition comes from applying uh, two sub supercharges, and the, but you also said that something else comes from uh, electromagnetic duality. Yes. So people wrote people wrote such some form, some functions here, but they turned out to be very restricted. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were, so first idea was that only constants could stay here. Mm -hmm. However, later it turned out that if you remember that there is electromagnetic duality you may have these functions not being constant. Mm. And, and actually, you may look, how can you get such things? Typical way, suppose you, you have something that is a constant, okay? And suppose you have uh, some matter system, mm -hmm. okay? And suppose you are trying to integrate out this matter system. So you have something induced. And you may start and, and you start to think what you actually induce. What is the induced action? And uh, studying this, people uh, came to the issue that uh, that something non-trivial can happen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, that this non-trivial is, is, is uh, described like this. So you may ask, uh, oh, okay. So, so that's how people got this result. But it was, once again, it was a curiosity. Like when, I, when we discussed n equals one supersymmetry in dimension four, we found that for some reason, this has to be Keller. This being Keller, you see, is very important, was very important from geometry, but it had nothing to do with uh, a priori, with supersymmetry. Mm -hmm. So you may be surprised that when you are getting something, it, uh, it is related to some geometrical facts. So a bit similarly, people study this uh, uh, series just, I would say for fun, for curiosity. Of course, nobody believes that we live in the world with such coupling. They, they, they just studied supersymmetric systems. Like other people studied algebraic integrable systems, why you are studying them? Ah, it's a nice mathematical object. Similarly, physicists starting from the 1970s were studying supersymmetric theories without great motivation, just uh, to study them. And they surprisingly found this result, mm -hmm. that this is determined by algebraic integrable system. Mm -hmm. Okay, mathematical curiosity, you know. Mm -hmm. Curiously, some system that has nothing to do with uh, our world and another system that also has nothing to do with our, our world, like algebraic integrable system, that is just continuation, complex continuation of ordinary integrable system, are somehow related. Mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. Yes, this, this was used in a uh, subwritten theory. Of course, I, I'm coming to it. <laughs> okay, I'm coming to it. But then later on, later on, uh, people said, okay, we have this series, 
and uh, he said, just imagine uh, uh, that we had non-abelian theory. And we have a Higgs phenomena there. It's very natural to have a Higgs phenomena in non-abelian theory. The question that was asked by Zyberg is, what would be the effect of abelian theory that we will get? And the answer was uh, obtained uh, late 70s, I think, around 1980. You just need to find the uh, uh, algebraic system. So, uh, so with some help of intuition, Zyberg uh, and Witten found the proper algebraic system. And then the question was to, to check. Did they got it right? How to check? It's an effective theory. How to check that this effective theory is the correct one? So, uh, one of the way to check it was this uh, was this another idea is that uh, let us compute Donaldson invariance. So computing some Donaldson invariance would help us to check that we got it right. So, uh, so some simple computation showed that we actually got it right. So uh, then. Uh, Yes. Uh, no, Andrew. You, no, you, you asked me to, to tell you when, when it will be like 10 minutes to my deadline. It's like something like that now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then later on, people realize that, OK, you can check Zyberg Witten to all instantons using uh, Nikrasov partition function. And somebody got a field prize for it. Akonikov uh, got it as a shadow because it's Akonikov Nikrasov theory. And oh, Nikrasov Akonikov theory. Okay, Nikrasov partition function. But does it mean that we should stop working? No, we should not stop working because, uh, because this is the data. This is the data that uh, should uh, do the mirror symmetry. Now we need to go to these systems, study their deformations, and find uh, special coordinates. And then uh, somebody will get another field price. OK? Well, it's, it was. Uh... It was under the name of S duality rather than mirror symmetry, T, T duality. Uh, so, uh, so this, so the fact that this is an electromagnetic system uh, is called uh, abelian uh, S duality. Yes. Abelian S. So, so there's a piece, piece here. So what, what people are actually interested in is non abelian S duality. And uh, it is still an open question. However, so why I want to say that with all this talk, I hope that I somehow motivated to, to, to see what? To see, to, to look a bit into the systems, just a bit into the systems, just in order to understand this omega mu 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 omega function, you need to study the systems. And that, and that you need to study the special coordinates on the modular space. And what is interesting is that the equation of special coordinates here seems to be an elliptic analog of uh, special coordinates that was found by Georgi Saita. And that's, OK, so, so all this was an explanation why you, why you should think how special coordinates were obtained. Because if you understand this properly, you will have a good uh, point of view how to, uh, how to attack 
the, the similar problem in uh, four dimensional mirror. Not to reproduce old results, but to get new results. Once again, nobody is interested in old results. We are studying all results in order to get new results. Okay, Basha. So this is our motivation. Okay, now we have to stop. I know it. So uh, I will continue tomorrow. Ah. So I'll continue tomorrow at 10 and then we will see. So Pasha, would you come or not? No, no, I, I cannot do both. Yes, 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 okay. So it mean, so it mean that, uh, okay, I, I, I'll see what to do uh, on Friday, but we will continue because I think it's important. I have, okay. I have other things to say. Yeah, okay. So it's uh, 10 at the Moscow time, right? Yes. Okay. But, 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 it, but it was the, the design, the seminar for United States. Maybe we... But I'll continue with this story next month, next Wednesday, mm -hmm. in the regular Chinese time. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pasha, okay? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I don't want uh, I don't want you to lose the path. You right, see. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. What are you going to discuss on on the on the seminar tomorrow? I will discuss it with Korea what to discuss. Mm -hmm. Because you are not coming, maybe right. he would come. If he would if, if he would also not come, maybe we will cancel the Friday seminar. But, uh, but if, if there would be a seminar, it would be available, as always. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so thank you. Thank you. Sen, have a good night. Pasha, have a, a good working time. Right, right. So. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, bye. Yeah. Okay, see you.